Miss um, Wilson, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to participate in this groundbreaking oral history project. Um, recognizing Washington, D.C.'s African-American trailblazers in the PR field. Um, speaking of trailblazers, uh, did you have the opportunity to meet or know Mr. Ophil Dukes, uh, who worked in Washington, D.C. and was considered an African-American trailblazer in the PR industry? Well, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here and talk about um, my experience. And I can't believe you guys consider me to be a trailblazer. Um, <laughs> That's a huge honor, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, in terms of Oldfield Dukes, um, I definitely did not know him personally, but living in Washington, D.C., we've all been touched and affected by him, and it's certainly, um, he's a testament to where I am today, because if it wasn't for organizations like his that he founded, Black Public Relations Society of America, um, Colorcom certainly wouldn't have been born, and so definitely learned a lot from him. Um, throughout the years and have attended many of those events and have met some great people um, you know, indirectly through him. So I definitely feel like he is a tra trailblazer and it, it is certainly sad that he is no longer with us. Thank you. Um, I've spoken to several other PR professionals and very few of them actually started out in PR specifically. What was your PR journey and how did you get started in public relations? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, in college, I was on that path to be a lawyer. Um, I did a study abroad in South Africa and um, was doing a lot of soul searching and realized I don't want to be a lawyer, but how do I um, make a profession out of everything that I like to do, which is involving communications and PR and event planning and logistics and strategic plans? I really didn't know um, how to you know, make that a profession. Um, I was doing a lot of research. After school, I went to Georgetown University for their communication program and um, learned a lot about the field and learned firsthand from various professors and realized this is the path that I want to be on. Great. Sounds good. Um, can you discuss with me uh, some of your PR career highlights, uh, like your most successful campaign and milestones that led you to where you are today? Okay. Um, you know, I would say a lot of the campaigns that I've done um, have actually been outside of work. Um, work is certainly important. We have, you know, we have various corporate clients that we work on, but I think what makes um, a good campaign is to be able to do that um, personally. For me, my family owns um, a really large um, funeral home in Nebraska, and, and they own this for 100 years, and so for me, I put together a campaign for them and was able to get them coverage in, uh, on the um, money section of the Omaha World Herald. And um, I think I was so young at the time, I was early 20s, and it just felt personally rewarding to me that I was able to help them out in that way. And, um, you know, to be working at a company at the same level that I was as at, you know, it would be VP doing something like that. And I was, um, you know, early 20s helping out my family, and it just felt great. Um, so there's been a number of campaigns like that that I've done um, inside work and outside of work that have truly been meaningful. Um, Colorcom was one of those things. Um, it, it really is because of Georgetown and developing strategic plan after strategic plan that I kind of did that with Colorcom and turned it into something and grew it um, larger than where it, where it originally started, which was um, a luncheon series. Okay, great. So as you mentioned with that, you um, brought up Colorcom. Can you explain to me what exactly is Colorcom and how did you come about the idea of it? Um, Colorcom is a professional membership organization. We're in four cities, D.C., New York, Chicago, and Atlanta. And we also host an annual conference. Um, really what I like to say is it's a, it's a movement. Um, it's a movement of women helping women. Um, I often like to consider us to be a good old girls network. I mean, we are a network that is letting you know about uncovered opportunities, letting you know about events that are happening, um, how to speak on panels, how to make yourself look more visible, um, beyond just being an organization that provides jobs, we want to help you get recognized within the industry. Um, so that is really one of our focus areas. It, it started several years ago in DC as a luncheon series. and. Um, had no intention to grow it to where it is, but it was the people that would come and would say that they wanted more opportunities to connect and they wanted more of a formal structure and 
they enjoyed meeting like-minded women and wanted this to continue. And, you know, it's hard to make a luncheon series continue forever. Um, so we formalized it and made this a professional organization and then decided to gather everyone from across the country to do um, a conference. Oh, wow. That's really um, amazing and it definitely is what makes you a trailblazer within the communications field. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, being that uh, you're, we're in D.C., how would you describe the differences in practicing public relations in D.C. Uh, compared to other places that you practice? D.C. is, um, you know, a town of go-getters. I've only, let's see, practiced in D.C. I've lived here for going on eight years. But, um, you know, I do, with Colorcom, it has taken me to the other cities that we're in, Atlanta, Chicago, and New York. Um, and so I've gotten to see how those networking styles are. But in D.C., we're certainly a ton of go-getters. Um, this is our culture. Our culture is networking. Our culture is connecting one another with each other. Um, that's almost second nature to the people that live here. So doing PR here, um, you know, it's, it's doing PR in a city that people are really eager and really hungry. And it really just fuels um, one's energy, certainly mine. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would like to add about your PR journey or uh, where you've been in PR? I think you know, I certainly wouldn't have gotten to this position if it wasn't for the support of other women. Um, but I'm nowhere where I want to be. I'm mm -hmm. just, um, you know, I'm still working hard and still trying to get to my final goal. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, women do help other women. And, um, you know, I'm certainly appreciative of that. And just wanting to reinforce that we don't get to any place alone. You know, oftentimes I hear successful women say that they've never had a mentor before, and I don't believe that. I believe that um, everyone who is successful has had mentors, role models, sponsors, a new term that we've coined called godmothers, which are the type of women that point you in a direction that could save you 10 years. And so maybe you've never went up to someone and say, can you be my mentor? But there are people along the way um, guiding us personally and professionally and I just um, I'm so thankful for those people in my life and just to want to reinforce that to other folks that it's really a team effort um, as we grow and progress and you know do our work and everything else it certainly takes um, not only a village in your personal life but it takes a village in your professional life so I just want to add that great thank you I really appreciate you taking your time out of your sure. schedule to um, participate in this groundbreaking um, or history project. And um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>